question was raised <coughs> based on a statement made by the Minister of Finance, a particular company revenue decreased by 30%. What are we doing about cutting costs? Well, cutting costs is an ongoing thing, a daily thing. Um, cutting costs has been the basis on which we were able to uh, produce a balanced budget. So in the cutting costs department, I think we have cut as much as we can cut uh, to still be able to reasonable provide services to our citizens, which ours is our raison d'etre. Cutting more into that would become counterproductive and uh, unreasonable, but um, much has to be done in the area of increasing revenues to be able to provide those services. Um, what is the status, the question was posed, on amending the invorderings vet? <clears throat> well, the invorderings vet uh, has been embarked upon the amendment of it because we have actually two different ordinan ordinances that relate to the collection of taxes. One regards a collection ordinance relative to direct taxes, and the other regards a collection ordinance regarding indirect taxes. And uh, it was the wisdom of Parliament to uh, require that a change be made, or government, that a change be made to one, simplify the collection ordinance and uh, uh, merge the two into one ordinance. That ordinance, presently the legislation, has been has passed the first and second vetting of the uh, legal phase vetting. Uh, the remarks that were made by the legal department, legal affairs, relative to the draft, are now being incorporated in a final draft to be sent back for a final vetting by the Fiscal Affairs Department, or the Fiscal Department is doing the necessary changes to have it submitted for final vetting. Once this is done, the tra trajectory on getting the uh, amendment of this ordinance, that uh, road will commence by approval by the Council of Ministers, then going to the Council of Advice, and eventually coming to Parliament for finalization. The Member of Parliament asked, how can we legally find a way to also trace individuals who have large sums of money in U.S. banks? I think, in fact, I've already indicated uh, uh, that the CRS system that have to be compliant by 2018 uh, will exactly afford, uh, will exactly answer the question that's being posed in this regard because you will have automatic exchange of that kind of information, including individuals who have uh, monies deposited in US banks. Like I said, hiding money is going to become extremely difficult in future. The Member of Parliament asked, uh, uh, are there incentives that I can think of that would bring money back to St. Martin? Uh, incentive, for instance, by lowering taxes that might be owed on that money, 15, 20, or 30 percent, what can be done to repatriate funds back to St. Martin? This is a concept that's not a new concept and a concept that has been applied before in the Netherlands and Tillys, exactly with that aim in mind, to have money that, uh, on which taxes were not paid and sitting somewhere in a bank account abroad, to bring that, that money back and to make that money productive in developing your country. Uh, so this has been done before, and 
you will recall that I mentioned that steps are being taken to form a national development bank on St. Martin. And the question then you'll be confronted with immediately is, well, how is that national bank going to get capital to be able to embark on development projects to develop St. Martin? Well, in the past, this concept, this idea of offering an incentive that people who have money abroad that was hidden from taxes or for other reasons, to offer them the opportunity to bring that money back, charge them a lower tax rate than they normally would pay, but also add a condition, provided you also invest in the shares of the uh, national bank to provide the national bank with the capital so that uh, development projects can be embarked, embarked upon via that national bank. So this is a question, uh, Member of Parliament, that is being looked into and attempts are going to be made to try to come up with a program to be able to get the national bank funded, amongst other things, in this way. Overcomes highlights. A new era for pickup. Need a loan that's quick and easy. Island Finance. Up to 50,000 guilders really easy. Island Finance. For education. Yes. A renovation. Yes. That's no problem. Ooh. Yes, it's true. That's not all. They're quick and friendly too. Island Finance. Appliances, vacations, even fix your car. You can depend. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Megawati is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Oh my, oh my, what an inventory list, and so unnecessary. But wait, your home contents are all insured by Be Sure. That means that you determine the amount you want to insure. No inventory list, no asshole. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. <laughs> Bob, I can understand why you're parking so carefully. Of course, when you can get 80% discount on your Be Sure car insurance. <laughs> but that's overdoing it, Bob. Are you be sure? Be sure. Yeah. Life is a journey full of connections. You're in safe hands, even when life starts too soon. You don't have to miss a single beat. When a bad hair day makes you sad, just sharing can bring you joy and more to come. They take the plunge, turn fear into faith, while you capture those beautiful moments. In the game of life, it's family that counts. They'll be there even when you lose. We all have our moments of reflection and hope. And when you feel you're losing everything in life, 
we there because there's more to come. When life starts too soon, you don't have to miss a single beat. We're here to connect you and share life. Tell so when you want more. afford what you crave, life just gets so good. KFC, so good for everyone. Minister, I'm coming back on this issue that you make mention a while ago, and Mr. Chairman, through you, the minister said that St. Martin's at 22%, and I want to elaborate or just sort of tag on from what my colleague, Member of Parliament, Sarah Westcott Williams, said a while ago. What study has been done, the numbers, where we, because it, it shouldn't be that the numbers are just being picked from out of the sky, and you, we just throw something up and we grab numbers and say this is what it is in terms of compliance, and this is what it is, and this, there must be some sort of, of study or something factual, some data, some analysis that, that one can go to, some research that we can put our hands on and say, this is the evidence, you know, you know, this is something tangible, this is something that, that, that has work that has been done, and we can say that this is what it is in terms of compliance. So I would like to know what study, uh, where is this number coming from? That's one question. And you also mentioned that Aruba is at 24%, Curacao is at 30%, and the region is 34%. And then you said they don't have another part of the island like St. Martin does. However, if that is the case, that we are at 22%, and let's, let's chop it in half, the island as it is, St. Martin being 16 square miles at 22%, and Curacao at 30%, 30%, Aruba at 24%, and just the 16 square miles. When I did my research a while ago, it said that Curacao is 178 square miles. I think that's what it said, and Aruba is 69 point something square miles, which means they have much more business and a larger landmark in terms of geography than St. Martin. What is the cost? Because you said it's going to take investment to bring our compliance up in terms of the tax department. Give us a cost. Because you said like Aruba, we can go out and borrow money. What is the cost? Government must have a figure, a number. I mean, it's easy to come into parliament and just to say it's going to take investment, it's going to take money. The cost, because at the end of the day, somebody has to foot the bill. Here we are at 16 square miles because we're not going to the front side and asking them about their taxes and their businesses. We are only talking about the southern part of St. Martin, the Dutch side, that is 16 square miles with just a certain amount of businesses on the island. We know where they are. We know who they are. We know what they are doing. What is the cost is going to take that we can at least get compliance up to 25%? At least, or even more. Because if it's only at 22%, being 16 square miles, then we have been doing a terrible job over the years. Our island is only so much, it is the size of it. Something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. 16 square miles we are talking about. That's what we are talking about. So I'm asking the question, what is the cost? Since we need investment, that's going to tackle the tax department, the tax issues, so we can bring our compliance up. Minister, through you, Mr. Chairman, if the minister can give us a figure so we can have an idea, what is it going to cost? Second to that, does the government have any plans to conduct a study in terms of what's going to be beneficial or what's going to work for St. Martin if we are looking to change 
add, take away in our tax system. Because the question comes back to this. What study was done when we decided to introduce the turnover tax to St. Martin? Where did the turnover tax come from? Something, something had to be done. Because we look at it after Hurricane Lewis and we say we needed money. We needed to inject a certain amount of funds. So let us do this. And by doing this, we can generate this. And it was supposed to be a temporary measure. But we all know here in St. Martin when we use the word temporary, it means forever. So again, what study? Does the government have plans to do any sort of study and say, this is what I believe is going to work for St. Martin? So that we wouldn't have to hear that it's temporary, and then we look at it's here forever. And the reason why I'm asking these questions, Minister, and excuse the way I'm saying it, but I am tired. I am tired of hearing words of pipeline, looking into something on the agenda. We're going to do it. We're going, I, I, want, I need something concrete. It can't be just we throwing checks up in the air and wherever they fall, they fall. Something, something must be tangible. So we can, there must be a vision, there must be a plan. Very important to me is, you know, just not going to talk much. I would like to see government plan of action for the short term because, you know, everything leads up to September. One of the best meetings I ever attend here in, in Parliament was the one with the cruise executives. We had the FCCA here, and they tell us exactly, and I think we have to give um, the FCCA president, Michelle Page, um, kudos, because she, she already told us exactly what we need to do to refresh our product. It's not that difficult. It's, it's nothing new also. This is something we all know from before. So let's get it done. You give refreshing your product. What do you do? The infrastructure. Very important to know to the people of St. Martin. We talk about Link 3, which is Ring Road. Make it drivable. We talk about Link 4. We talk about Link 6. We need to run it. We also have where you say, and Minister, Mr. Chairman, through you, the illegal vendors harassing the tourists on the beach, the beach, Phillipsburg and different areas. Can we just put a good structure in place so that we can address that situation? It's not that difficult, but we need to address it. Also, very important, affordable housing we spoke about. You know, if you go out in a, in a community based on our professionals, the first thing they, they ask you, uh, MP, you know, just came home as a professional. Um, I'm living back with my mother and my, my parents. I'm looking for affordable housing. Because when you go out in the market, the prices are so high. We're just looking for opportunity to, to get somewhere which we could call home. Very important job creation also, you know. And these are simple things which we talk about all the time, but we need to put it into, into practice now. Like I self said, um, this coalition, um, joining this coalition where my main focus is assisting and helping the people, and I think we're on the right track. But we need to finish with a bang, you know. And how you finish with a bang? Just address the main simple issues of moving St. Martin forward. Mr. Chairman, like I said, I'm very short, straight to the point, and I'm looking forward to finishing up with a bang. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible.
Only Hilux overcomes Hilux. A new era for pickup. These are the doors that never close. These are the hands that make a difference. These are the walls that could tell countless stories of helping and healing, of storms weathered, of change and growth, of a place where life begins, where hearts are mended, and where hope grows stronger. For more than a quarter of a century, the physicians, medical professionals, and staff of St. Martin Medical Center have combined advanced medical technology and compassionate care to bring a world of medicine to our friends, neighbors, and visitors to the island of St. Martin we all call home. As proud as we are of what we have accomplished, we believe there is still much work to do to continue a proud tradition of providing everyone in our community with the latest technology, the best medicine, and the most exceptional care. St. Martin Medical Center, celebrating 25 years of serving, caring, healing. Well, definitely, I think in the coming weeks, um, we will be start unveiling a number of candidates. There's a number of um, candidates who are very much interested in running with USP. It is our belief that we must include everyone. Um, the amount of persons who wants to run, um, it is a challenge because you only have a certain amount of numbers that you can fill. But nevertheless, those who may not get on the list, we are asking still for their support one way or the other. Um, we also started our radio program um, last week, Wednesday, on My 88.3 FM. It is our radio program for the party that we will be having our platform discussed. Um, this coming Wednesday, we will be announcing who will be on that program, and we hope to at least um, in the coming week or two to announce a number of other candidates uh, prospective candidates who will be running. Uh, we still have the same candidates. Um, some of those who ran with us last time still will be running, um, even though we know what took place um, in 2014. Nevertheless, um, USP still feel that we continue to grow and grow in the right direction. So, so you're much going to be on Well, of course, um, I will not sit here and say no. That is a possibility that MP Matzo will run with USP. That is left up to MP Matzo. Mm -hmm. MP Matzo has been one of my strongest supporters along with MP Maurice Lake. Um, seeing the, the issues that we had in the previous coalition, um, MC, MP Matzo stuck and stood toe in toe with USP with what was agreed upon. Um, USP don't believe in turning it back against those who have stood and supported us. 
Um, yes, MP Matza has his issues that he's dealing with, but nevertheless, um, he continue to deal with that. But he will make the decision in due time. USP is open to having that discussion with MP Matza to be part of this team. And what about uh, Ruben Thompson? Ruben Thompson is still on board. He works um, with the ministry. Um, all that we know to this day, that all candidates are on board with USP, um, one way or the other. You're not going to get 40 press conferences, right? Yeah. Um, not... Four. <laughs> 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 we're getting over it 23 times, so... We're going to try not to have too many press conferences by announcing, but nevertheless, uh, we owe the respect to MP Maurice Lake um, to involve the public um, that MP Lake uh, will be joining USP, and it shows the respect that USP has um, for a number of um, candidates like himself and members of parliament who choose to want to run with USP. Are you looking at uh, the elections in September? What is your, your expectation? Of well, our expectations, our expectations have always looked in the direction of winning outright. That is what we believe in um, as a political party, first and foremost. But we will make sure that um, USP continue to improve, um, not only by seats, but the information that we present to the public, to the voting population, that would give them a reason to support USP. Um, and then they will decide how many seats USP will get. Um, it's all up to the population of this country.